Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. I'm founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Very excited. Today we have Sam Markowitz, who's a top copywriter and direct response marketer. He's known as Gary Halbert's last protege. He creates multimedia marketing campaigns that make his clients tens of millions of dollars. And before the age of 30, his work had already made a client over $100 million online. Today, Sam runs the Sam Markowitz Group with a heavy focus on marketing consulting, mass market advertising, and direct response brand building. We're lucky to have Sam for many reasons, and especially he keeps a very low profile. Sam, thanks for joining me. I'm glad to be here. Excited. You know, Sam, since it's Inspired Insider, I always ask, tell me about your lowest moment and then how you pushed forward through that tough time. Hmm. Lowest moment. Yeah. Um, you know, The answer I'm going to give you is going to surprise you, um, probably, because when I look back at a lot of things, I, thank God, knock on wood, have not had anything extremely devastating happen to me, um, compared to a lot of people I know who, you know, uh, have had a lot of devastating hap devastating things happen, because that's life, unfortunately. Um, you know, but certainly I have what I view as common things. I mean, I've been, you know, in business, I've had, you know, I've went up and I've went down very quickly, you know, um, and I've, you know, and for lots of reasons, including being cheated out of deals and all sorts of things. I mean, you know, but that's to me, ah, okay. You know, I've had heartbreak. I've had all sorts of things. I think I rebound very quickly from setbacks because I know that I'm able to recover and I have this mentality of, of just being able to recover. Um, here's where I would say I, you know, was probably the most difficult um, is when I was actually, so that first campaign I remember, um, that $100 million campaign, um, <clears throat> I started making, and that was right after Gary, so you know, um, I went from you know, my experience with Gary was a high. Then he passed away. That was a very big low, by the way, because yeah. um, he was my mentor. That was unexpected. You know, he was my, became my best friend at the time, um, you know, and he passed away out of the blue. And on top of, like, losing, you know, him, um, all my money was also tied up with him. Um, so we had all sorts of projects and I kept my money with his money. So there was no way to differentiate my money from his money. So I lost all my money, um, in that process. I also, his apartment, um, ended up being locked up. I actually went away for Passover, um, at that point in time that he, yeah, he passed away. It was on Passover. I went to New York to visit my family for Passover. Um, and I couldn't get my stuff from his apartment for, quite a while mm. so you know i lost like you know gary triple I lost, threat like, horrible like, yeah like all my stuff i lost like my money like everything and i was like this is not good you know i i gotta start from scratch but you know what you know i'll figure it out i'll get some clients now and uh and that's fine so it wasn't it was a big him passing away was a real setback everything else was whatever yeah um and then i quickly got into you know making money again and making really great money and I started making like a lot more money than most people at my age at that time would be making. I was in my, I don't know, early 20s, like early mid 20s. And you, you know, I thought to myself that I would be very happy at this point in my life, like making all this money. Um, total time freedom, could do what I want, um, just traveling all over the place, having a great time. And yet, while I'm making all this money, I, and I was, I was happy, but at the same time, I was very miserable inside. Hmm. Uh, and I was miserable for quite a while um, inside. And I think that was probably the most difficult thing for me. And I'll tell you why. Um, I realized in this process that, number one, I expected that money would make me happy. 
and fix everything. And it didn't. Um, and what I realized was that I was doing everything that I'm doing for money. Essentially, I was playing the game for money. And it quickly dawned upon me that I have a very big problem with that, that my focus is totally off from where it needs to be. Um, because, you know, money is not fulfillment in itself. Um, and I realized that my focus has to be on, on the value that I'm providing to people. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, I came into what I would call an existential crisis for quite a while in trying to figure out what I need to do with myself. Being that I have this skill, um, you know, and I have this power, so to speak, um, to make a lot of money um, creating businesses um, in this way, what should I do with that? Um, and I was probably more miserable from that internal struggle hmm. over the course of a few years to figure that out than anything else I ever experienced in my life. And that may seem strange because you would think that there's plenty of other things that would be far more difficult on you, but that was actually the most difficult thing for me, hmm. um, very frankly, because that everything else I learned to like deal with that I just you know that was just very tough. It was that internal yeah. struggle. Yeah, that internal struggle, you know, of of thinking, well, I'm here, you know, shouldn't I be happy? And yet I'm not. And like, what am I missing? And going on that path to find that now. Um, I yeah, that was. So yeah. how did you find it? Um, it took a good few years um, to to find you know the path that I wanted to go on. I mean, the immediate shift I knew I need to make is I need to be working on things from a value perspective as opposed to the money. The money should just be a side benefit. Versus, mm -hmm. I came in all about the money because I needed the money. You know, um, so I had to switch my thinking. I knew automatically to just value money will come because I know how to make it. But then after I made that shift, the question started becoming: Where do I need to focus my attention to best? Yeah. Um, and and it, you know, it, it kind of put me in the path. It, it, of continual improvement, I'd say, in many ways that I am on today uh, in that process. And I have a lot of things that I have determined I would like to do um, in a big way um, down the line here in my future. Um, and I'm moving, you know, towards to a number of things um, in, in a big way. Um, but it, it has become really figuring out where I could add the most value. And I have determined I could do it in, in a few different ways. Um, but it's taken many, many years. And I feel like it's an ongoing process that will never end. Um, as I keep reaching new milestones. Um, so now, for example, you know, health has become something important to me very much. Um, so I'm moving into, you know, doing a lot of health projects, um, you know, uh, as an example. Um, yeah. Yeah. Education is something that's very important to me, uh, which I plan to move into. And I've been building out a plan to, like, you know, to do that in that case. So yeah. it, it's that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sam, on the other side of it, what's been one of the most proud moments? Proud moments. Mm. Um, ah, that's an easier question. Um, so the first thing that just came to mind um, is I remember, and this is random because there's lots of proud moments, but it's yeah. what came to mind. I remember... Uh, being at a fundraising event one night um, and it was like a high-end fundraising event and uh, they had an auction and it was one of the first like really nice fundraising events I went to and I ended up um, they had an auction and I and I got my little brother who's into music a guitar uh, signed by by uh, like Mark Anthony and his band. It was Mark Anthony's uh, guitarist. And I remember being in the cab home, and I'm thinking, you know, this is like really cool. Like, uh, like I'm able to like go to fundraisers and like you know give charity and you know and come home and like surprise my little brother with like this thing. Like this is what like this is all really about. You yeah. know, it kind of was a moment of like hitting me there. Um, yeah. And 
you know, like another moment, you know, that comes to mind is like also like not long thereafter, like I, you know, I took my little brother and my mom to like Disney World, you know, and got, I got like a massive suite for them. It was beautiful and just all out and like being able to do that for my family, yeah. especially in like my mid 20s was like, I felt like I was blessed to be able to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and then uh, like, you know, um, my brother Danny, another example, final one I'll give. Um, my brother Danny um, mentored under Jay Abraham, actually, for a year. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and uh, he came to me when he had the idea to do so, and he reached out to Jay, and Jay told him that he'll make the same offer that Gary made me, which was about $30,000 for, like, a mentorship. And so, but Danny didn't have the money, so I lent, like, Danny the money mm -hmm. um, to go and mentor under, like, Jay. And again, you know, it's an example, like being able to do that kind of stuff and paying it forward and help people and, and yeah. you know, make people happy and, uh, and do that kind of stuff really is where my proudest moments probably are yeah. and, and the examples that come to mind off the bat. So, um, and being able to do them at such a young age has just been a blessing. Yeah. yeah. Sam, this has been absolutely phenomenal. I really appreciate it. Where should we point people towards? I have one last question, but where should we point people towards, if anywhere? I mean, it's not like you're looking for any business or anything like that. Is there a particular site we should tell people to check out? The only site I have is, uh, is sammerkowitzgroup.com, so mm -hmm. you could certainly go there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What should we leave people with? I have so many more questions, like I'm, I'm, which I'm going to hold back on. I'm curious. Your logo is really interesting to me. I figure there, you're very methodical in your thinking. I'm curious why you have a line with the crown on it. Um, I'm also curious about what are your top uh, business marketing and psychology books that you'd recommend. Um, but I'm just going to leave it up to you. What, where should we? You, you, we talked a lot here. A lot of great advice. Great stories. What should we leave people with? Um, I could answer that stuff for you another time separately, Jeremy. I'm glad to do it or follow up sometime. But um, if I had to, you know, leave everyone with something, um, mm. which comes in a lead off with, I guess, where we were just at. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people, you know, ask a question, um, which is, "Am I worthy of this goal?" Um, hmm. You know, they have a goal they want to pursue, and they ask themselves, "Am I worthy of it? Mm -hmm. You know, am I able to accomplish this goal?" And I find that asking, "Am I worthy of this goal?" is just the very wrong question to be asking. Mm -hmm. um, the right question to be asking is, "Is this goal worthy of me?" And when you ask yourself, "Is this goal worthy of me?" Mm -hmm. that's a life-changing question. Um, it's a question that. It has changed the direction of my life and continues to do so when I re-ask it. Um, and it's, it's one that I'd certainly leave uh, as a piece of advice or something if, if, if that's what you wanted. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sam, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's been fantastic. Yeah, it has. Great talking, Jeremy. Uh, thanks for inviting me to do this. Um, the, it was fun. All that right. That was great. Thanks, yeah. Sam. Take care. Bye-bye.